Daskbag is one of Dask's simpler APIs. It's really useful for doing embarrassingly parallel analyses and a lot of pre-processing, especially of text, JSON, or Avro data. In this example, we're going to show Dask running on first a few simple numbers to get a basic understanding. And then we're going to play with some JSON data from a website called mybinder.org, which serves some GitHub repositories. So to start, let's play with Dask bag just on a sequence of numbers. Here I'm constructing a bag with 10 elements uh, separated into four different partitions. So a bag is like a bunch of lists. Every list holds some numbers. Uh, so this might be set up, you know, these three might be in one list, these three in another, these three in another, and maybe this one is on its own in a final list. Bag looks a lot like uh, PySpark, or maybe that's the Python map filter and reduce functions. So we can do things like map a function. Maybe we'll take x and square every element. This produces just a new bag with the same number of partitions. If we want to compute that, we can go ahead and that gives us our concrete result. Dask then ran those computations uh, you know, on our little four threads here. We might also do something like we might filter. It will get only, out only the even elements. And we might chain those together. So we don't want to call compute every time. We want to chain many things together so that Dask can do a bunch of computation uh, in a nice pipeline way. There are also a variety of reductions and aggregations that we can use, things like group by, fold by, or in this case, maybe just a simple sum. So that's Dask bag in a nutshell. These are the methods you often use, map, filter, sum, different aggregations. Let's now go look at that on a real data set. So we have here uh, 100 files that come from a, a web service called mybinder.org. I don't need to know too much about this service, but it deals with some, some GitHub repositories. And we're going to sort of play a little bit with some of their data. So if you look at one line of one of these files, it looks like this. There's some JSON encoded text. We can use the read text function from DASBag, and we're going to take two lines of that file. And we see that here are two Python strings that are, it looks like they're JSON encoded text. So let's go ahead and let's map the JSON loads function across that bag in order to get some more information, in order to get some more structure out of these uh, lines of text. So let's call records equals lines dot map JSON dot loads. So we're going to take this bag, which has probably just one partition in it because we're just reading one file. And we're going to map the loads function across every line uh, of text in that bag. And let's just take uh, take a couple elements out of that. And so now we see the same data, but now rather than um, rather than being of text type, of string type, we now get actual Python dictionaries. This will make it a little bit easier for us to do some analyses. So for example, let's, uh, let's count which of these GitHub repositories are coming up the most frequently. So we see here one is from Brian Team. Maybe it's someone's personal repository. And here's IPython. I suspect IPython comes up a bit more frequently. So we're going to take our records. We're going to map a function, which will take some dictionary and get out the spec field. Then we're going to call frequencies. Frequencies is a built-in aggregation that will do a counting of all those values. And let's finally call compute. Dask bag, along with all other Dask collections, is lazy by default. So if you don't call compute, it just gives you a single result. It gives you a lazy result, rather. So here we go. We've now computed all of those things. It looks like this isn't sorted. I think there's actually a sort keyword in the frequencies op operation. And so there, we can see that indeed this was the most common um, GitHub repository that was used. Also libraries like JupyterLab, Spacey, Bokeh, down here looks like Dask is even present. So that was on one file. This is Dask, so let's run it on many files in parallel. We'll do that just by not selecting one file name, but all of the file names. So now we see we're using all of our machine to analyze all of these files in parallel, and we get out some much larger numbers, some larger data sets. 
rather than compute everything here, let's just take the top 20. Great. So let's, uh, that's often, DAS bag is often used for pre-processing. So let's filter out this data a little bit and then save it out to another file. So let's say we're interested in, say, the DASC uh, records. So let's take our records and we'll filter. We're going to pass it a function, which takes in a dictionary. And we're going to say anything where DASC is in the spec um, field of this, of this dictionary. And then we'll maybe we're going to, eventually we're going to call two text files to save this to some location. Maybe data slash my binder or data analysis um, star dot JSON. But these values, this is still a bag of dictionaries. And for us to write text, we probably need to have actual strings. So let's map again JSON dot dumps to turn these dictionaries into text. And let's run that. So there we go. We've read in all of this data. We've processed it with JSON, we've filtered some records out, we've mapped it back to JSON, and we're writing it to text. If we go and look at data slash analysis, we see that now there are indeed many different files. Let's go look at one of those files. And so it's the same data that we had before, but now they're all about Dask. It looks like some of these are from the Dask repository, some of these are from other individuals like Ian Rose. So again, DAS bag is a really nice way to pre-process a lot of data, do basic analyses, filter it, aggregate it, etc. Or for more complex analyses, DAS bag may not be the right choice. Something like DAS data frame might be better. So conveniently, there is a two data frame method on a DAS bag, which can provide for you not a bag, but a data frame. Here we're going to do the same computation as before. We're going to pick out the spec column and run value counts. But now we're using DAS data frame rather than bag, which might be more familiar to people with more pandas experience. So uh, in the links uh, that are coming up now, you can take a look at DAS data frame to get more information. Uh, yeah, generally speaking, DAS bag is a good data structure to manage lists of Python objects. Could be for anything, but it's usually used for embarrassingly parallel workloads or for pre-processing a bunch of text, JSON, or Avro data.